What's up, mobile shooter, and welcome back to another awesome video. The video you just saw was shot on the Xiaomi 11T. Xiaomi has reached out to me to test out their new phone. As you know, I'm an iPhone user, and so far my tutorials have been based around the iPhone. Most of the tutorials I teach can be applied to almost any smartphone since the principles applied are the same, but I know that some of you watching would also appreciate me making videos on an Android phone. So today is your lucky day because I will be reviewing the Xiaomi 11T and show you how to shoot cinematic videos with it. Specifically, we'll be looking at the Pro Video Mode since it gives you more control over your camera and has some great video features that can be used for producing great looking videos. Now, because the Xiaomi 11T is not a flagship phone like the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's even more important to know how your phone camera works to get the best possible uh, quality out of this camera. There will be a timestamp below if you wanna skip or go back to a particular part in the video. And with that said, let's get started. So this is the Xiaomi 11T. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the video features. It comes with a pro video mode feature that is crucial for mobile filmmakers because it allows me to control ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and more to get the video I want. Unlike the standard video mode, the built-in pro video mode puts the controls in your hands. Now, there are some things I don't like about it uh, that I will address in this video that is important for you to know as a mobile filmmaker. Let's start off with the camera. The Xiaomi 11T comes with a 108 megapixel sensor. It has three cameras on the back. The main camera is a 26 millimeter wide angle lens with an aperture of f1.8 that produces a nice looking shallow depth of field in your video. You also have a 16 millimeter ultra wide angle lens, an f2.2 that gives you a 120 degree field of view. This is great if you're in a tight space and need to capture more in the frame. It also comes with a 50 millimeter macro lens with an an aperture of 2.5 to capture detailed shots. The selfie camera or front facing camera is a 24 millimeter wide angle lens with an aperture of 2.5. So let's look at some of the video mode features it offers. The standard video mode is a great place to start, but as a mobile filmmaker, you want full control over your camera, right? What's great about the standard video mode is that it works similarly like the native camera app on the iPhone, which is great for run and gun shooting. If you're using this mode, at least set and lock your focus and exposure before recording so no changes occur that could mess up the shot. The HDR function can also come in handy since it increases the dynamic range in your video preventing your highlights from being blown out. Now, something very important is that you also want to turn image stabilization off. Something I notice on the Xiaomi 11T is that it uses electronic image stabilization to compensate for shaky hand movement. It uses electronic processing uh, instead of optical image stabilization. Unfortunately, when image stabilization is on, not only does the image crop in, but also introduces strange artifacts and jello-like effects in your video. That's why I recommend turning uh, the image stabilization off in the settings. Instead, what I would recommend is use a gimbal and additionally stabilize your footage in post for better results. Another feature that I like is the portrait video mode. By selecting the magic wand and choosing bokeh, you can adjust the slider to increase or decrease the background blurriness. This can be useful for talking head videos, and this feature is also available for the selfie camera. Let me now introduce you to the pro video mode and show you the camera settings I use to produce cinematic video results. I'm gonna set up the Xiaomi 11T on this tripod, do a screen recording so you guys can follow along. So to access the pro video mode, just select the stock camera, and then we're gonna head over to pro, and then you're gonna select video and now we're in the pro video mode section. So first of all, in the pro video mode, you can tap to set focus and exposure, and you can also lock it by tap holding on it, and a yellow uh, lock will appear, which means that your exposure and focus is locked. What you also can do is separate focus and exposure. The square reticle is the focus, and the uh, circle reticle is the exposure, but unfortunately you can't lock it. And that's where we're gonna use the manual settings on the camera. So on the top right, you have different uh, camera 
setting options. We're gonna start off with the lenses. We're currently on the standard lens and you can choose between wide, ultra wide and macro. Below you have the exposure value, um, which compensates the exposure. And I usually leave that at zero and just use the ISO and shutter speed to adjust the exposure correctly. Next you have ISO. And what ISO does is it digitally boosts uh, the brightness in the camera. As you can see, it's set to auto, but as soon as I dra start dragging up or down, uh, I can adjust the ISO value. So I usually keep it at the lowest number, which is 50. Next is shutter speed. This is also set to auto, but as I drag with my fingers up, I can start adjusting it. So usually I wanna set it double my frame rate, but um, as you can see, if I do that, so we're currently recording in 4K 30 frames per second, um, you will see that the image is overexposed and I don't have an ND filter with me, so I'm gonna drag this down a little bit more to evenly uh, expose my image. So let's now move on to the next one, which is focus. Uh, when tapping on it, uh, I can slide either up or down to set my focus. For the moment, I'm gonna leave this in auto because I actually prefer using a tap to focus like that. And when the ISO is uh, set to manual, I can actually use the tap function to focus, which is cool. Next is white balance. The auto function actually does a great job, but I wanna make sure to lock it to avoid color shifts. And you can also customize your white balance and right now, uh, it's actually a pretty sunny day. So I can set it to around 5,600 and the white balance is locked. So let me now introduce you to the different uh, resolution that it offers. So we're currently using the wide angle lens. And when tapping up here, you can choose up to 4K 30 frames per second when shooting with the wide angle lens. When using the ultra wide angle lens, you'll see that you're only able to shoot in 1080p 30 frames per second. And with the macro lens as well, 1080p 30 frames per second. I usually go with the wide angle lens since it's the best uh, lens of all of the three cameras. And I usually would set it to 4K 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, you don't have 24 or 25 frames per second, um, but you can use like third-party apps such as uh, maybe Filmic Pro. Uh, hopefully they will come with an update. It doesn't work perfectly yet, but uh, maybe in the future. But for the moment, we have to stick with 4K 30 frames per second. Or if you wanna go slow motion, you can go with 1080p 60 frames per second. Now you also have the ability to shoot in log, which flattens the image, giving you more options in post to color grade, and also increases the dynamic range in your video, meaning that you will have more details in the shadow areas. Now you have to watch out when using the log picture profile because it can introduce noise. Now log is only available in 4K 30 frames per second. Now you can also enable grid lines. Uh, as you can see, I have different grid lines that I can uh, activate, which is really nice. You also have a center mark, which is great for shooting hyperlapse, for example. And I can also enable a straighten to uh, level my camera, uh, which is quite useful up here. As you can see, the camera is currently leveled. Another feature I like is the movie frame, uh, which introduces letterbox into your video. This way you don't have to crop in post and it will sort of give you this uh, wide angled view in your video, which looks really cinematic. Another great feature is focus peaking. You wanna use this feature, especially if you're manually focusing with your finger. So as you can see, as I drag up, I can see what parts are in focus. Now there's also this feature called exposure verification, uh, which shows me what parts of the image are overexposed or underexposed. 
the blue stripes meaning areas that are underexposed and the red stripes meaning overexposed. So currently we can see that um, in the bushes where there's lots of shadows, that area is underexposed, but there are no blown out highlights. Next is audio zoom. And what this does is it takes the sound from the subject that is in focus and enhances that, if that makes sense. So this is how it sounds like using the audio zoom. We're recording on the internal mic of the Xiaomi 11T. And this is how it sounds like without the audio zoom and we're still using the internal mic on the Xiaomi 11T. Now you can additionally adjust your settings by heading to the settings icon. The first one is allow tagging videos where you can record your video and while you're recording, tag certain moments to then bring it up once you play the video back. Then you have image stabilization. I recommend turning that off. Shoot with screen off. I leave that off because I always want my screen on whenever I'm uh, recording a video. Next is the pro features. I really like this. You can enable the histogram for a real-time exposure feedback and sonograph for monitoring the volume. And you can actually adjust the volume using the slider. So when heading back, you'll see that to the upper left, uh, you'll have the histogram and you also have the sonograph. And when I tap on the sonograph, I can actually adjust the volume up here, which is really nice. The histogram is a bit small, but better than nothing, I can still see how the image looks like. So nothing is overexposed. I can see a little bit of underexposure uh, because more of the information is on the left. And the goal is really to have the information uh, spread out. So what I can do is reduce the shutter speed a bit. One over 25. So this looks good. Next is audio settings. There's actually a smart noise reduction, uh, which reduces the impact of wind on sound recording. And this might be very useful if you forgot your external microphone and are recording a vlog. You can easily turn that on to really reduce that wind noise um, in your video. It is a little bit windy outside. I don't have a smart noise reduction on. And this is how it sounds like, just using the internal mic. And this is how it sounds like with smart noise reduction on. There's a little bit of wind, uh, but not that much. Next is video encoder. I recommend shooting in H.265 high performance. Um, this will not only give you a higher video quality, but will also reduce the file size of your video. It might be a bit harder to edit with this um, uh, code, but um, I prefer using this as it has more advantages. Now you can actually use the volume button up here to uh, start recording. You can also customize different settings here, um, but I leave it how it is. You can also save your location. Uh, shutter sound, I leave that on. This way I know when the recording starts. Now this is also a great feature, save previous mode. So every time I open my camera, it will open up the previous mode I've selected, including the settings that I uh, put in. So all the settings that I'm dialing in now will stay the same uh, whenever I open up the stock camera. So below the setting button, you have movie filter. Um, this only works, I think in 1080p, 30 frames per second, but you can put or slap a filter onto your video and this way you don't have to color grade in post. Um, I usually like to shoot in log and color grade my footage afterwards, um, but it's great to have that option as well. Now there are also different metering modes. The metering modes let you measure the light in specific area of the frame. Center weight mainly focuses on the central area of the frame, which is great for shooting subjects that are standing in the middle of the frame. Frame average considers all areas of your image and spot metering covers the area in one spot, giving you precise control. And to the very bottom, you can turn on flashlight.
right, so here are my final thoughts on the Xiaomi 11T. The Pro Video Mode is a great video feature for those that need more control over their camera. It has assisting tools such as histogram, exposure verification, and more that is normally found in high-end cameras. Now, Xiaomi is heading in the right direction, but as a mobile filmmaker, I would have really liked 24 or 25 frames per second, which is the cinematic frame rate. 30 frames per second produces a sharper image and is great for vlogging. But if you want to have more of that filmic look in your video, 24 or 25 frames per second is preferred, at least for me. Third-party apps such as Filmic Pro needs to be updated since the Xiaomi 11T just came out. I was able to record in 4K 25 frames per second, but it still lacks a few function and has some glitches. I enjoy the HDR feature for the standard video mode and can be useful. I wish they integrated this feature in the Pro video mode as I don't want to switch. In certain situations, HDR can produce better results than the log option. I find that the log picture profile uh, can introduce more noise. What I like is the fingerprint option that allows me to quickly open up the pro video mode and get started right away with shooting. Additionally, being able to save the previous mode you shot at is a time saver too. Another benefit is the fast charging option as it only takes me 36 minutes to fully charge the battery. Now there are more video features features that we haven't talked about, such as the time-lapse function, dual video mode, and more. But as you can see, it is packed with video features. In this video, I really wanted to focus on the pro video mode, as this will be important for those that need to shoot more professional videos. What do you guys think of the Xiaomi 11T? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you so much for your support. 100K is coming soon. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. This will help me grow and keep Keep continuing making these awesome video tutorials. Now also don't forget to download my free smartphone filmmaking guide that will help you get started making quality videos with your smartphone and make sure to join the private smartphone filmmaking group on Facebook to share your work and get feedback from others. If you want to learn more here are two videos that you should check out that might interest you. Anyway I will enjoy the rest of the day. I hope you do that too. Stay mobile and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.